All right. Well, let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Glad to see you all here. Um, my name is David Tolkien. I am the Director of Business Development at Shopware, a cloud-based shop management system. A uh, quick sound check. Uh, Carolyn, Gary, raise your hand. You guys can hear me. We're good. All right. Wonderful. Um, just a couple housekeeping items for everyone before we get started. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A button. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please post them there. And if we get a chance, we will hop in and get them answered during the presentation. Otherwise, we will make sure that we get to them at the end. Um, I am very pleased to present to you our webinar today, which is Mitchell One Pro Demand and Shopware. Um, our first guest is going to be Gary Hickson, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Mitchell One. Um, Gary is a husband and father of two. He's originally from Pittsburgh. We just had an interesting discussion about the weather. Um, he has an engineering degree plus an MBA from Penn State University. Um, he moved to San Diego sort of on a spur of the moment uh, trip and has been living in California for the past 20 years. Uh, 15 of those years have been spent at Mitchell One, where Gary wears many hats, as we all do, including product development, project management, marketing, pricing, and continuous improvement. Um, while not working, uh, Gary enjoys spending time with his family. Uh, hiking, investing, and being outdoors. And we'll you know, pass it off to Gary in just a bit. But before that, um, after Gary goes through his demo of Pro Demand um, and the enhanced wiring diagrams, SureTrack, and the estimated guide integration, we're going to pass things over to the wonderful Carolyn Cocolet. Carolyn um, has a passion for the industry and is committed to providing cutting edge software solutions for modern repair facilities. Uh, she owns and operates her own garage, Luscious Garage in San Francisco, which is a hybrid specialty shop. Her shop was awarded Green Small Business of the Year and is one of is the first automotive business to become a certified benefit corporation. Uh, if there's an association in the automotive aftermarket, Carolyn is a member, including ASA, ACA, Women in Auto Care, Diag.net. Service Center Scholars in ASCCA, where she chairs on the board of directors. And her shop in 2017 was awarded a shop owner of the year by Women in Auto Care. Once Gary finishes his demo of Pro Demand, we're going to pass things over to Carolyn, and she's going to run through the new uh, Mitchell, De Mitchell integration with, um, with Shopware. So without further ado, Gary, if you want to take it over and share your screen and show everybody what we have to offer, we will get this kicked off. Thanks, David. Um, there we go. Okay, can you guys hear me? All right. Thank you, David, and thank you, Carolyn. Uh, today, I'm going to go through an overview of Pro Demand. Let me just, uh, you, you guys should see my, see my screen, and we're going to start with, with just an overview of Pro Demand, and I'm going to touch on all the key features and go through the modules today. So the uh, first thing when you log into ProDemand is that it's going to ask you to select the vehicle. So that's one of the basic functions of ProDemand. And after you've selected the vehicle, let me go ahead and, and I'm, today I'm going to select a, a 2010 Toyota Camry. Once you've selected the vehicle, it actually populates all the information for you based on uh, the vehicle you've selected. Now, a couple of things I'm going to touch on under vehicle selection is that you can also go back into vehicle history. If you wanted to select a vehicle from history, uh, quite often technicians are sharing a computer uh, in the shop. So that is a, a frequently used feature as well as a, identifying a vehicle based on the VIN or license plate number. So the VIN is a 17 digit um, that you can enter and also, you know, exclusive to Pro Demand is that we do allow you to enter license plate. This one is for the US only. Um, but uh, if you do have this feature, it's really nice that you're able to, you know, just stand at the computer, maybe look across the bay and be able to enter that license plate without having to go and, and write down the VIN and, and, and come back to the, step away from the computer and, and come back. One thing I do want to point out here Notice that there is a uh, link right below that license plate. Uh, learn how plate the VIN works. And there's a few areas throughout the product where we include uh, links and 
what we're trying to do is just help you out with some of the features in Pro Demand. So if you're new to the product or just using the product, uh, one thing you can do is click on some of those links. And we have a blog that we've set up. And you can go and read through the blog post that we've created uh, just to learn a little bit more about the features. And um, that helps you get more familiar and also gives you some of the Q&As that you might have and, and answer some of the questions for you related to, to some of our common I think features. we lost your audio there. Oh, am I, am I back now? David, can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to my 2010 Toyota Camry. Uh, just one thing I want to point out across the top. After you selected the vehicles, recalls, campaigns come back right away. That way you can look, look them up, see if there's any uh, outstanding issues for the vehicle. Uh, there is a help icon in product. And um, if you're new to the product or you just want to learn a little bit more about the product, this is a nice place to go to to uh, learn about the fe product features. It includes in-product tutorials that will actually guide you step by step. You also have training videos. And we have other resources such as our support page and link out to the blog. If you're a shop owner and you have a new technician who may not be familiar with ProDemand, uh, that is a place that you can always go to to learn more information. Additionally, we have a contact button here. Uh, just one more thing to, to point out is uh, the 800 number, 888-724-6742. We do have a few groups be behind the scenes that support uh, ProDemand, uh, including a technical support for help logging in uh, and a customer service for account support. And then there would be content support which is specific to pro demand and repair information. So if there's any, any time that you're ever having trouble finding repair information within the product, you can just call that 800 number contact content support. And uh, we have a group of guys who are former technicians and very familiar with the product that are gonna help you to navigate the product. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and do a little bit of navigating through the product. Um, just real quick, the, the modules within ProDemand, uh, the first module that you actually see that we've been dropped off on is the OneSearch Plus module. So this is where we have our repair information and diagnostics information. We have an estimate guide. This is our parts and labor information. Uh, we have a quote module that sort of goes, is a, a quick, very light shop management system or, or to write an, an estimate um, that goes hand in hand with the estimate guide. Uh, there's a maintenance module uh, for looking up maintenance services from a technician point of view, being able to create a printout. We have a short track community, so you can actually um, ask questions to other technicians who are also using ProDemand. And there is a service manual module, and this is looking up repair information, but looking up more from a, a category standpoint. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at the OneSearch Plus uh, just on the screen itself. You have a search bar at the top. You have the quick link ribbons uh, right in the middle of the screen. And then down below, you have your top 10 lists. So just real quick, let me look at the top 10 list. Um, notice how it says based on 195,000 repairs. So uh, we're actually looking at real world information uh, coming from shops. And it's gonna tell you for this specific vehicle. So my example is a 2010 Toyota Camry. Uh, what are the, some of those common components, uh, common DTCs, and common symptoms with the vehicle? You know, one thing that you can see for, for this particular vehicle is uh, just looking down through a list of DTCs is there are um, some ignition DTCs. Uh, you can see ignition coil, random misfire, um, you know, the s different cylinder misfires down below. And you can see in the symptoms, engine run, runs rough. So maybe this can give you... Um, some insight into the vehicle and common issues that, that the vehicle would have. Uh, just to touch on the Quick Links ribbon real quick. Uh, so in the middle of the screen, you have the most common accessed information that we have in ProDemand. So just for all users, I highly recommend becoming familiar with the Quick Links ribbon and the information contained inside. Um, 
first link here is the technical bulletins. So you can jump right into your technical bulletins. If you are performing repair on the vehicle, um, let's just say we're looking at a water pump, you can search for it and quickly look up and see if there's any TSBs associated with a water pump. Uh, there's, you can also search by the TSB number. We have common specs and procedures. Um, likely, you're going to be using ProDemand to look up uh, specifications such as torque specs, uh, firing order. Um, all of that information is contained within common specifications. Drivers Assist and ADOS. Uh, this is a new feature that we added in, in the past couple years, uh, but it is, it'll is it list out any of the ADOS features for the vehicle and then list the components that are related to, to that feature. And so you can quickly um, narrow based on the ADOS component. And as well, uh, again, there's a quick link. If you're unfamiliar with ADOS, you can also click on, click on this quick link and uh, we can take you to, again, to a blog post that can, can help you familiarize yourself with this feature and with this feature within ProDemand. All right, let me talk about the wiring diagrams real quick, and I wanted to do an example here. So let's say you're looking up a VVT sensor on this vehicle. Let me just use the, the search bar, uh, VVT sensor, and I'm gonna click on wiring diagrams. One nice thing about our diagrams is you can see that uh, we've, after performing the search, we're going to drop you off right on the specific diagram that you need. So engine performance, uh, this is diagram four of five. So instead of dropping you off on, on the number one and then having to kind of search through every diagram, uh, you land on that first one right away. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And notice that VVT sensor is actually highlighted as well as all the wires coming coming out from that sensor and I can click on the next page and I can view um, and trace those wires to their end endpoint. I go back one, just one other thing to notice. Uh, the links here, notice how they're in blue and you can actually click on those links. And for instance, if you wanted to know, well, where's that VVT sensor uh, located? You can click on that component locations uh, link and you can just navigate right here to the component location pretty quickly. As well, you have a component connector end view. If you're looking for the connector end views, you have them right away as well. So really nice feature there for the wiring diagrams uh, when you go through that, that search engine. Uh, one, one more uh, example while I'm here on the uh, OneSearch Plus screen. Let me go ahead and search for the uh, most common DTC that we have in this vehicle, P0356. All right, and notice that is gonna bring me back my search results. It'll also tell me uh, related to P0356 and give me a feel if I am diagnosing this trouble code. Um, it's actually gonna tell me which components might be at, at fault based on this trouble code. So that's a nice list there help you prioritize your diagnosis. And then once I do click through for that code, uh, we're gonna bring you back information prioritized based on um, how you would diagnose this issue. So the first uh, card that comes up is actually the TSB card. If I click on it, you can see that it's gonna be filtered down specifically for that code. So P0356 uh, is, is the TSB that I'm gonna see. Also, we brought back our real world information as well. You can see under real fixes, we have uh, different various real fixes that are coming up related to the code. So if you have, um, want to think of these, I think of them as silver bullet fixes that, that can quickly narrow down the uh, diagnostic information to a very concise um, card that I can read. And I'm also gonna click on this causes and fixes card which is unique to pro demand. And let's just say you're not just getting P0356 back, but you get a series of codes back together. And that's actually gonna help you also narrow down uh, related components based on that code. And just scrolling down here, um, 
in general, when your information comes back with, with the card view, you can see it's either OEM information or we have the SureTrack information. Anything SureTrack is basically our real world information set that we have in the product. And that's all exclusive for ProDemand. Um, I click on the wiring diagrams. In this case, we're actually uh, narrowing down the wiring diagrams based on the ignition system. You can see there's my color wiring diagrams there. I also have remove and replace. So this is gonna be my uh, removal and installation instructions. I can jump down to those as well in the product. So with that one search, you know, the advantage here is that we're bringing back a lot of information for the vehicle all in one lookup. Uh, we put the information on, on we call them cards uh, within, you know, the Mitchell One internal dialogue and, um, you can quickly just kind of go through as if you were diagnosing that code and all the information is is organized in that manner. Uh, just one more, the after repair info. So you can see a lot of times we need it to do a confirmation driving pattern uh, on the fix. So we'll also bring that information back all in one lookup. Okay, let me switch over to the uh, estimate guide. And this I know a lot of people are gonna be interested in the estimate guide. Uh, we recently updated our estimate guide with an uh, an improved look and feel. Uh, we've kept the categories all the same. So if you are familiar with, with ProDemand and you've been a longtime user, um, the categories remain the same. Uh, we move the search box to the middle of the screen. Uh, if I wanted to look up that water pump example, I can do a search for it. And one thing that's changed recently is this, we have brought the labor and the parts together under one one tab within the estimate guide. So both the labor and parts information is brought back together within the product, which is, is really nice. And that's a, a feature that I, our customers have been asking for. So um, also in, in addition to showing the labor time, uh, we give a skill level, there's a labor time. If the manufacturer gives us the warranty time, we will also show you the warranty time. Under the parts, uh, this is the OEM part pricing. And you can also click on the link there for the uh, for the part number, and we will show you, show you graphics or explosive views related to the part information. So it makes it nice, uh, especially if you're looking up transmission parts and you may not know the specific uh, type or the specific name of the part as you're as you're uh, performing the service. You could you could look up the part in here and then uh, trace it back and look at your um, at your parts list to find that within it. If I go back through um, also on the breadcrumb trail that we've, we've added here, which is a new feature. And one more thing I want everybody to kind of take a look at before leave the estimate guide, there's, there's I icon and we've included help documents here. And we have policies and procedures, how to write an estimate uh, and frequently asked questions. This frequently asked questions one is a really good document uh, just if you're using the estimate guide and you want to know, you know, what's included or what's not included in the estimate guide, um, this is a nice five-page document that you can go through. It's going to tell you um, what has been included in the time, you know, how we go through and create the labor times. And then, um, for instance, like, we do not include um, if it, the bolts are very rusty or seized, time to uh, deal with that situation. So that will help you out just in terms of creating an estimate to know if you do have, uh, or if you're in the Rust Belt of Ohio or Pennsylvania, where I'm from, um, to know to add maybe a little bit extra time uh, based, on the, um, based on the condition of the car uh, for that area. Okay, uh, just one touch on as well. Uh, one quick trick if you're using the product, if you uh, have performed a search for a water pump, and you go and you want to go into maintenance or fluids within the estimate guide. Um, first up, it says no information available. And you're saying, well, why is that? Well, that's because the main water pump isn't listed in the maintenance information. It doesn't require maintenance. So just know to clear out your search term and that in you'll get to the information uh, in maintenance. So maintenance is given under mileage. Uh, we also have periodic uh, maintenance based on the conditions for this vehicle. 
and there's time-based maintenance. So you can see all of those, you can click on them, um, and as you're creating your estimate, you can add details. As well, if you have any fluids, uh, the list of fluids is right here uh, within the estimate guide. So all details are included. You can add this and um, transfer it out to your shop management system, uh, Shopware. If I scroll down, I'm going to skip over the quotes module and jump down to the maintenance module. So maintenance, as I was just showing in the maintenance services and under the estimate guide, um, this is more of a technician view of maintenance. So if you wanted to go down through and say select your uh, mileage-based maintenance, uh, you can do so here as well as your time-based maintenance. Uh, you can also select to do a printout Uh, from this page. While I'm here, just a couple quick things on the side. We also have the fluid capacities link under a quick links. So you can quickly open those up. You can get fluid types, uh, capacity specifications, any notes from the manufacturer. Now, everything in here would be out of the owner's manual. So it matches what your customer is going to see as well as reset procedures. So very quickly, you can see um, oil reset procedures, uh, such as dash, what you find to, to do on the dashboard, uh, TVMS reset procedures as well. Let me skip down to the SureTrack community. Um, for this particular vehicle, not showing any uh, recent community activity, but let me just click on all vehicles uh, just to show you that uh, what the community feature is, is basically uh, an online forum that allows our, our technicians and users to go out and ask questions out to other users. Uh, specifically, this would get used for diagnostics. And, um, it, you know, it's a way to connect our different technicians uh, so that they can help each other out. The last module I want to touch on, just to show it here as, as part of the overview of, of ProDemand, is the uh, service manual module. Just clicking down through, this is basically the category lookup. Um, I always recommend looking up information based on the OneSearch module, but I know a lot of people still like to go through and drive down through based on categories. So similar to opening up the service manual, again, if I was looking for a cooling system, uh, service information, I'm going to look up that water pump information. and Quite simply, it's uh, just going down through the menus here and um, getting through the removal procedure uh, for the water pump. Uh, just one thing again on usability. I know sometimes if you're just first using this, um, on the left-hand side here, we call this the drawer internally. And just if you want to open and close that to then navigate to a different area of the service manual, uh, you can do that. All right. Um, with that, that is my overview of ProDemand. So, um, Carolyn, I think you wanted to show the integration with Shopware next, right? Yeah. Thank you very much, Gary. That was awesome. Uh, you can pass it over to Carolyn. She will share her screen and take it from there. Thank you so much, Gary. We're thrilled to have you. Um, and welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another webinar. Let me share my screen. Hopefully you can see that okay. So um, obviously folks who are using Shopware are familiar with what this page is. Uh, we're gonna focus on the stuff that is specific to the integration with ProDemand. Really excited to have rolled this out uh, and share it with everybody. I mean, just looking at all of the functionality that Gary just showed, it's really a incredibly powerful tool. And to be able to have this um, accessible native inside of your shop management system is obviously super powerful. So um, really excited about this partnership and uh, to show it off with you guys. So in terms of how to set this thing up, so um, we are hosting uh, the account uh, configuration under shop settings. So if you go to your shop settings, you will see a tab called partner services. <clears throat> And on that tab, you are able to configure third parties for which you have specific credentials or, or other account details. We do have 
other integrations that are running um, in sort of a tenant wide level, like our API and um, uh, other partner services, but this is specifically ones that are kind of shop specific and have specific credentials. So you'll have um, different credentials for different shops if you're a multiple location uh, operator. So you'll see obviously Mitchell One's credentials are hosted here. I currently have it connected. I'll go ahead and disconnect it and sort of show you how that looks. So if you have yet to connect uh, ProDemand to your account, um, this is what you will see on this page. You will click activate. Um, you can select different subscription types. So with uh, this week's release, we're very excited to be able to uh, support not only ProDemand, but also ShopKey Pro. So if you're an existing ShopKey uh, customer, you can select ShopKey. Otherwise, if you're ProDemand, obviously select ProDemand. And then you're gonna enter your credentials um, for that as uh, given to you by Mitchell and click activate. And if it, uh, if those are not appropriate credentials, it's not gonna activate, it's not gonna say anything. So you know you've typed it incorrect when it says terrific, you, you did it. Um, so we'll shake, show connected here. Then if you are back on a uh, repair order and we'll just pick um, this Civic for the sake of example, <clears throat> Once Mitchell is hooked up, you will uh, be able to access um, the platform in two different places. So the first is uh, ProDemand service information. So under the vehicle information box, which you know everyone's familiar with, uh, there is a drop-down menu, and in that menu, we'll see Mitchell repair information. So again, if Mitchell is not hooked up, this will not show here. If you've got your credentials um, input, this will then appear. And when you click this, this is going to pass over um, to Mitchell's ProDemand that exact uh, vehicle configuration. So um, the, the VIN will come over if there is a uh, question about what the uh, trim level is or some other detail, you will see a vehicle resolver open ahead of this, which will ask you those details and then pass it along. So you are basically um, locked in and ready to go here to look up all of that awesome stuff that Gary was just showing you. Uh, so if you know I'm looking up DTCs or whatever, I could just keyword search if I want to. Um, it works exactly like you know you were just uh, seeing on that earlier demo. So just rocking in a new tab. Um, this is available to anyone who has um, access to the repair order. So um, technicians can use this punch out. It doesn't have to just be service advisors. So anyone who has access to this menu can click this and then punch out without having to re-enter it in ProDemand. So um, you know, for folks that are using uh, tablets or, or workstations, this is gonna allow text to just get right to what, they, what the questions they're trying to answer. The second place that you're gonna see Mitchell hooked up is in our estimating workflow. So <clears throat> when I click plus service, uh, I'm in my usual estimating flow, which is, um, you know, looking up my can jobs, looking up anything I've previously sold before. And then we have our traditional, um, uh, native estimator, which is um, um, uh, you know something that people are familiar with. What folks will newly see over here is the Mitchell One button. And um, this is the button that uh, our customers have been asking for for a long time and seeing it now in this workflow is you know very exciting. Uh, so for folks who are wanting to estimate using uh, Mitchell's uh, parts and labor, uh, you will click this button and it's going to open what's called the, the Mitchell um, ProDemand intent for parts and labor in its own window. So this is exactly the same uh, interface that you were just seeing Gary demonstrate within the ProDemand flow. Um, it's in its own window. So if you want to sort of refer back to what's going on on this um, page, you can. But in this flow, you can basically you know, build your estimate just like you normally would in Mitchell. So if I am searching for um, you know, radiator, uh, I can start finding that um, specific um, labor action. So in this case, I'm getting my 2.5 uh, labor time. I can select the parts for this particular operation. But then what is so exciting and so powerful about ProDemand is that you can additionally search for other items and just start uh, layering these things on. So if you want to continue to search for like radiator hose and then go and pick um, uh, different hoses as well, go ahead and select what those parts are. Uh, if you want to go to fluids and you want to find your coolant, this is to your point, Gary, about making sure that you um, remember to search for what's on this tab. So hydrogen and fill, for example, this would be the 
coolant capacity for this, for this uh, application. I would add that. And then when I click transfer, all of this stuff together is gonna come back to Shopware as a new service. So we'll see this appear down at the bottom um, of the repair order. We're getting those labor times for um, both the radiator and the radiator hose activity. So those are itemized here according to um, what is in um, uh, um, Mitchell. And what you'll notice also is that these hours have been slightly adjusted. So this is Shopware's native book time multiplier, which you uh, know you can configure in your shop settings as well. So for folks that are in uh, areas, to your point, Gary, that have more rust or other kinds of severe uh, conditions and want to be able to uh, automatically adjust those labor times according to their needs, you can go ahead and um, enter that in your shop settings as usual. And that will also apply to the labor times that are coming back from Mitchell. So no need to do that adjustments yourself. Uh, whatever setting you've entered is going to affect uh, additionally the stuff that's coming back from Mitchell. Um, obviously, you see your parts here, <clears throat> including the fluid uh, that has come back. So we don't get uh, costs for fluid uh, out, of, out of Mitchell, but obviously you get your capacity here. So you have your opportunity to then search out of your inventory for the actual coolant that you're going to sell, or you can re reference that and, and go ahead and enter the uh, exact um, cost of those um, uh, fluids, if you wish, into your inventory page. So lots of different ways you can handle this. And then obviously, um, Shopware is hosting um, you know, part tracking and so on and so forth as we normally do. So you can tell what parts you have, what parts you don't have. And if you want to go out and shop with your e-com integrators uh, to go and source those parts, you can go ahead and do that. And it will replace those parts um, you know, in the interface so that you're, you can sell with aftermarket parts instead of OE if those are the ones that you're going to sell. That exact same workflow is, um, applies to uh, estimating workflow, so, uh, um, excuse me, so for recommendations. So if you are building a quote for a customer, uh, instead of just building an estimate or otherwise adding services directly on the page, that exact same workflow applies over here um, in the usual way. So you're back in our estimating workflow, you will see Mitchell one uh, loaded here. Uh, we can go ahead and click it. It's gonna open that same exact window. <clears throat> so let's say in this case, I wanna put together uh, a maintenance service. I can go ahead and go to my maintenance. I can look up you know, mileage, for example. This is a uh, indicator-based uh, vehicle. So you can actually see why you're getting only one mileage selection. So if I wanted to do a 3B, for example, um, I can take my three and add that. So we'll do uh, without a valve adjustment. And we're going to click um, as well the details. So as you know, the um, service information up here at the top is going to carry the labor time. And then the details are going to carry the inspection. And this is, again, one of those things that makes this integration so tremendously powerful is that Mitchell supports um, itemized inspections that are included in the maintenance and Shopware also uh, supports inspections native to our services. So all that information that is coming back from Mitchell around inspection points will automatically populate into your checklist for that service. So I'll show you that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that as well. And then I can go back to service B. I can pick, um, you know, with a valve adjustment and those um, maintenance items. In these cases, we have the uh, details of what that maintenance included, uh, excuse me, includes inside of the inspection details. So if I want to build engine oil and engine oil filter into this specific workflow, then I can go and select those under fluids and under parts and labor. So if I want to go to fluids, I can pick um, engine oil. We'll do with filter add. Um, if we want to go to parts and labor, we want to do filter here and search. So engine mechanical lubrication, uh, parts, engine oil filter add. So now I've built basically my oil and filter and my inspection items for this uh, service. And then I can click transfer. And all of that good stuff is gonna come back into the Shopware service. So in this case, Shopware is identifying that um, our inventory price is higher than OE list. It's doing this automatically to check this against your inventory uh, data. We're gonna say, no, I would prefer to use uh, my inventory price in this case, because it's, it's higher. 
Uh, so I can go ahead and click continue. And then this is going to build this service for me. So I'm getting my labor times, again, marked up according to my uh, book type modifier. I am getting my um, uh, parts. This is in this case out of uh, my shop's inventory. You can see that we're updated to a different part number. So I would know to, to swap that here, um, which I could actually go ahead and do. Why don't I just do that? I'll show you how that works. So if I want to copy this and select that out of my inventory, I would search for that and select it. I got four on hand, looks good. And then I can delete this guy. Same thing as I was mentioning here, um, you've got our quantity of oil, but this isn't uh, the oil that I, I normally sell. This is OE oil. I'm gonna search for my own oil. Oops, I'll put in, oh, it's a zero. So I can pull that up too. We will pick this Eco Power. I'm gonna put that in for 3.4. Uh, and replace that with the um, factory one. Um, so now I'm getting my labor, I'm getting my parts. And then to my point, you've got your um, inspection items built right in here to this service. So you do not have to build a separate uh, inspection and you know that this is going to be exactly what the factory inspection list is as uh, managed by the ProDemand um, uh, database. So tons of power over here in terms of being able to get uh, your inspections at the fingertips of your technicians. So this is a recommendation for shopware users. You know how this works. Um, if you want to rename this and have it be, you know, maintenance service, uh, you can do that. Maintenance service B3. Uh, recommend. That's going to appear here. You can publish that, present this to your customer. Your customer can approve it. And you are going to promote this onto this repair order. And I'll just show you how that looks in sort of large format. Uh, this is in edit mode. I can go back to work mode. Again, you're going to have your labor stuff already loaded here under labor. You got your parts loaded under your parts. Um, and then here is your inspection laid out for you, uh, for your technician to get to work. Uh, not only is that going to um, present all of those items uh, and show that value to your customer, um, Shopware is also uh, supporting all of the nuance behind some of these inspection items. So, um, for example, if you're inspecting engine coolant, um, there's all sorts of additional uh, decoration on these line items so your technicians know what those additional details are and don't lose track of them. Um, so this is an example of a maintenance service. Upshot is that anything that you are selecting out of the um, ProDemand workflow is going to transfer back to Shopware automatically. So we are um, hosting parts, labor, including if you are moving between different operations, those will batch together into a single service. Um, obviously any maintenance items, checklist items, labor times um, for those maintenance items, as well as fluids. So lots of um, additional power here. So this is the workflow for both uh, a repair item and a maintenance item. I think that covers sort of the lion's share of um, the different types of services that you might be selecting. Uh, and so I'll wait for, for questions on more of that. Uh, one question that did come in for Gary was, um, how does Mitchell One actually create labor times? Okay. Uh, interestingly, you know, Glenn Mitchell started Mitchell One. Now, the years are escaping me, but I want to say it was 47, 1947 or so. And, and the start of Mitchell One was, uh, was labor times. And uh, we have always had our own labor group here. Um, if you look through the ProDemand product, we license our OEM information for the repair from, from the OEMs for repair information, uh, but the labor times are actually created by our labor editors here at Mitchell One. So um, they do not follow the warranty time. A lot of people think that they just take the warranty times and kind of uh, base it on that, but we actually uh, use the warranty times to verify, but the, mostly we look at the repair procedures that the OEMs put out and build our labor times based on the repair procedures. And, um, and the editorial staff is a very experienced group. Uh, they've been, again, this is 
Mitch has been doing this for a long time, and uh, they typically will have 10 to 15 years experience as a technician first before becoming a labor editor. You can tell Gary, just the way that you guys built the um, DTC groupings with the mm -hmm. um, potential associated causes, root causes is totally um, thinking in the mind of the technician. And uh, what, a, what a tremendous time saver. Anyway, you can tell in, in the way the product works that it's clearly um, being guided by domain experts. Yeah, we really try to, in, the, in terms of OneSearch Plus and how it's laid out, go from how a diagnostic technician would go through and go through his diagnosis. Um, one other question that just came in, Carolyn, which says, I noticed when parts are added from Mitchell, they come in without pricing. Is that a setting in Shopware so that they do come in with pricing, or how does that work? Great question, uh, Roman. So um, fluids only do not have a, a customer quoted price. Also, none of the parts have cost because, um, you know, Mitchell doesn't know what your relationship is with your local dealership and what your cost is necessarily going to be. So what they know is the, um, you know, retail uh, dealer list for um, parts. And then for fluids, they are going to come across with quantity, but not with um, any uh, dollar value at all. So it will um, load into the service with quoted price of zero, um, but with the correct quantity only for fluids I'm speaking of here. Uh, and then you can either um, enter what you want to charge for those fluids, like you've got a standard rate for, you know, quart of oil or something, or you can replace that line with the actual oil that's in your inventory that you want to sell as you saw me do in that workflow but for every other part that comes back you're going to get oe list price pre-populated and if you are using um, oe parts in your inventory like you already have them in your inventory shopware will use your inventory pricing whatever that configuration happens to be so like say for example i am carrying that honda oil filter and I have the optimizer enabled to mark that oil filter up more than what the OE list is. When um, that part comes back from Mitchell and lands on that service, it's going to use your optimized price for that filter. So not only are we um, capturing prices from Mitchell in the case you don't have one, if you do already have that part in your inventory and a price assigned, we will yours, use your price and not necessarily just the, the book time. So very much enabled with pricing. And a follow-up to that, Carolyn, um, he says, is there a way for us to add the part request to go to WorldPack, or does it need to go to Ecom and then add it in? And will it then show up twice if you do that? Uh, great question. So uh, the e-commerce integrations work exactly the same as usual. So if you don't have those parts, you can either select, you know, order from WorldPack. So you'd open the part summary modal, and you would go to, um, you know, select the vendor WorldPack for those OE parts, and then they would pass over to speed dial uh, and then you can shop for the parts on speed dial and bring them back. If you are bringing back parts that are not the same part uh, that you had originally quoted, they are going to um, create additional parts on the repair order. So shopware can't differentiate between um, a part that's an equivalent. Like if, if it comes back from world pack and it says, you know, a Denso spark plug instead of a Toyota spark plug, um, shopware is going to say it's the, you know, they're different parts potentially that, that Roman wants to sell. Um, but uh, you will be able to obviously see that you've um, gotten all the parts that you need directly on that service to be able to validate, okay, I've got my plugs, I got my filters, whatever, and then, um, uh, delete the, the OE placeholders if you're not selling OE parts. Um, Another one, Carolyn, someone said, we have ShopKey Pro Demand and we're unable to select it to log in and only shows Mitchell one. Is the ShopKey not live yet or what's the status with that? Yeah, that's this week's release. Great question. Um, we're coming at you as fast as we possibly can. So um, that'll come out this week. You'll see release notes and you'll be able to enable it. So either tonight or tomorrow is likely. And then another question was, can we link it with our local part stores? Yeah, great. So whatever your e-commerce integrations are will be to your local store, right? So when you're selecting, doesn't matter if it's Speed Dial or WorldPack or O'Reilly or whatever you want to use, um, 
whatever you've configured inside of Shopware with those uh, integration credentials will be to that local store. Um, and for folks that are using parts tech, um, we actually have a uh, native parts catalog. It's currently in beta, but we'll actually allow you to see that stuff uh, in application. So there's some additional fancy around uh, e-commerce integrations, but um, certainly when you do hook this stuff up, what it's talking to is your local configured store. You're not looking at like just general catalogs. Gary, I'm curious, you got to see our mm -hmm. integration with ProDeman and obviously you know ProDeman very, very well. Um, were you surprised to be able to see how well the um, uh, stuff kind of fit into shopware service structure because um, you know, some shop management systems don't have maintenance sort of, or at least um, inspection workflows built into their services. That's something that's um, unique to our structure. And I don't, I don't know if you thought that was interesting. I did think it was interesting. I, I don't necessarily know, I haven't seen a lot of integrations, but I thought you guys did a great job on the integration. I mean, I was impressed with how quickly you can actually um, update what gets transferred over and kind of make, make it correct as to, to how you want it to display for the customer. So you guys did a great job. Thanks. I'm not trying to set um, you up there, but I mean, you know, oh, all, no, all, no, all, you, all yes, you are. <laughs> it looks really, looks great. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, what's, what's so what's uh, what I'm particularly proud of is that, you know, ProtoMan has so much information and you want to get that information obviously um, to the technician, but to also have it, um, presented to the customer and all those different uh, additional things really help, you know, add the value to what you're selling. So um, we're proud mm -hmm. to be able to take the stuff that you've already um, put together and really showcase it. Sorry, David, go ahead. No, that's, I just had one other one question that came in said, as a subscriber, can you get training on pro demand? Uh, absolutely, you can. So uh, for, for pro demand or or for Shopkey Pro, either of our subscribers, uh, you can always call into our content support group or, or a customer service, and you can schedule free training. So I know a lot of times technicians might uh, join the shop and they haven't used our product before. So if they do need training, you can always call in, schedule a training, and we will go through one-on-one uh, -on -one training with the with the technician. Or if you want, you know, sometimes shops will want to schedule for the entire shop, and and we'll we'll give a training that way. So um, always free and we're happy to do it. Great, thank you. Um, any other questions coming in? I think we've gotten to everything that everybody has asked so far. All right, well, we'll hang around for a minute or two in case there's any other questions, but I guess at that point, this uh, that ends our amazing presentation. Gary, I really wanna thank you for being here and running through the product. Um, Carolyn, I wanna thank you for demoing and, and showing our user base and hopefully some potential user base, uh, all that we have to offer. And we look forward to the, the rollout of, of ShopKey uh, either today or tomorrow so that our additional users can use that. Um, as always, anybody that's on uh, this webinar, if you have any questions about anything that you saw today, or if you have any idea for uh, additional content you'd like to see from us, you know, uh, please let us know. Send us an email. Uh, respond to one of the emails that we send you. Give me a call personally, um, because we really enjoy putting these on and trying to bring, um, you know, bring nice and relevant and interesting things uh, to you to uh, help you make your shops better and hopefully then make your lives better. I had two more comments, David. One is I, I see the question that came in um, about ShopKey. I'll go ahead and share my screen one more time. So <clears throat> this is on our uh, demo instance. This is what's coming at you here uh, with our next release. So um, typically Wednesday night, sometimes Thursday, but very, very shortly here, Damon. So what you'll see then is um, on your shop settings, when you go to the partner services and when you connect to Mitchell one, you are gonna see a drop down selection here and you're gonna see ShopKey Pro as an option. So this is gonna come out um, tonight, tomorrow, um, check the release notes and um, then you're unblocked there. Thank you so much for your patience. 
the one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, sort of in closing, is for folks that don't have uh, Mitchell One, this is uh, where you can go to get signed up. So um, mitchellone.com slash myrep, you put in your zip code, you'll get a, a fantastic Mitchell rep calling you uh, probably in uh, two minutes, <laughs> extremely responsive, really tremendous people. Um, so uh, don't hesitate to go over here if you're you know, either a current Mitchell user and you're interested in shopware, uh, obviously uh, let us know if you'd like a demo. But if you're a current shopware customer and you want to take advantage of this stuff and you're not currently on Mitchell, uh, mitchell1.com, my rep, and that will get you going to hook up all these great features. Great. Well, again, thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, everybody that attended, both our customers, our prospective customers, and I see some of our partners on there. So glad to see that you're keeping updated on all the amazing things that we have coming out. Um, and that will uh, end our broadcast. Thanks for attending, everyone. Thank you, Gary. Right. Thank you.